Welcome to this video on developing animations with Keynote on the iPad. We're going to get started by adding shapes and customizing the appearance of our slides. So let's dive in. I'm going to open Keynote on my iPad, which is down on my dock. It's this app here. When it opens, I have a choice of various ways that I can create a presentation. I have my large plus button or my smaller one on the taskbar. When you create a presentation, you're asked to choose a theme. For this one, I'm just going to go with basic white because we are going to be changing things as we go through. So once my slide is ready to go and my presentation is started, I'm going to remove some of the excess stuff that I don't need. So I tap on a shape and I select delete from the menu that pops up. Once I have a blank slide, it's time to start adding shapes and customizing the appearance of my animation. Let's start by pressing the plus button at the top and you can see there's various media types I could add in. I could add in a photo or video, I can take a picture, I can record a sound, put in a drawing, but I'm going to go to this next tab along and I'm going to add in shapes. There are hundreds, if not almost a thousand shapes from mathematical to education to transport to animals. The list is endless. You can view the menus or you can search. I'm going to go to animals and select a horse. Putting my finger on any of the corner dots, I can pull to make my shape larger. I don't use pinch and zoom to make it larger. I use a single fin finger on one of the corner dots to make it bigger or smaller. Now, if I was to tap my paintbrush just now, say I wanted to change the color of my shape, it's not giving me the option. It's only letting me change the background. There's nothing there about changing the color of a shape. That's because my shape wasn't selected. It's selected when it has all of the dots around it. Now, when I tap my paintbrush, you can see I can have any shape, I can uh, any color, I can have multiple colors. I can have gradients, I can have some of the ones that are preset, I can have some that look textured, even these gradient ones that go from light to dark, which is quite cool, but I think I'm gonna pick my own. So I'm gonna to go to gradient, I'm gonna choose my start color. Well, horses are brown, most horses are brown anyway. So let's start with a dark brown and end with a light brown. Okay, now let's tap away, looks pretty realistic. But if I was to have multiple horses on here, how could I tell them apart? Well, an easy way to tell them apart would be to have maybe a different color on each of them. So here's a really great thing that Keynote can do. It can combine and even cut out shapes. Let's take my rounded square. I'm gonna place it here. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. Remember, finger on the corner, uh, I, the corner dot to make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to position it. I'm going to make it overhang a little bit. That looks good, but it still looks like a square. It'd be quite nice if I could make it appear in the same shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on my horse and I'm going to tap copy. I'm going to tap again and I'm going to tap paste. Okay, I've got a second horse here. That's good. I'm going to place it on top. Those yellow lines let me know that I'm in the same space. And when I tap on my horse, I get this option here, select objects. Okay, let's tap select objects. That lets me select multiple objects on my slide. Okay, good. So let's select, and I want to select the horse and the rounded square. Okay, so both of those are now selected. I'm gonna tap done, and notice they're still selected. Hmm, maybe I can do something with this. Maybe I could group them. Now, let's go up to my paintbrush here. And I'm, instead of using style, that's what I use to change color, I'm going to go to arrange. So paintbrush and arrange. Then I'm going to swipe my finger up and you see these four options at the bottom underneath the, the combine. I have cut out, I have unite, I have subtract. I'm going to choose the second one here and watch what happens to my square. So choosing that unite, that second option at the bottom, has given me a shape that is in, it's, it's got the same curves. It's, it's almost like it's part of the horse. 
Now I could make this different colour. Okay, that's quite cool now. That's looking a bit different. Imagine I had four horses with different colours. So let's select my horse and my, let's, let's call it um, just my shape. So I'm going to tap done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap group because I want it to be two separate shapes, but the one shape, if that makes sense. That means if I change the size, everything changes, not just one thing. So I'm going to take my horse and I'm going to put it to the side here. But before I do that, I'm going to tap on my horse and I'm going to tap copy. You can see it in the menu there because I want to have multiple horses. So I tap on my horse and select copy so that I can have multiple ones. We'll look at how we change the color. Um, I can tap on my slide and tap paste. There we go, could move it down here. But now I have two blue horses. So I'm going to double tap on that shape in the middle. So I select my horse, double tap right on that shape. You see that, that's where my finger is. Go to my paintbrush, change the color to green. Okay, so I want you to give this a go. I want you to try it. If you need to pause and go back, that's fine. But I'm going to paste and I'm going to repeat this four times. I'm going to have four different horses. So paintbrush and red for this one. And I'm going to tap again. And I'm going to tap paste. Tap, double tap on my shape. Tap the paintbrush, change the color. Okay. I've now got four horses, different colors. Remember you tap and then double tap. So it's one tap to select, double tap to select the shape that you want to change the color of. And then you can start to position them. All right, so there's plenty of time if you need to pause and go back and have a go at the different, um, the, the different things that I've shown. If you need to skip back, that's absolutely fine. But what you can do at this stage now is you could have four objects on your slide ready to get into position for the next part of our video, which is starting this animation. So if you need to pause here and come back for doing the animation, that's fine. But what you can try is having four shapes that are similar, but look slightly different. Okay. Welcome back. So you've hopefully had the chance to have four objects on your slide, able to, you know, look different, but be the same. You know, you're, you're customizing how it looks. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to customize our animation. Now my white slide was quite boring. So I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to find an image, but I'm all about, you know, getting the right kind of images, images that I'm allowed to select. So I'm going to go to Safari, which is my browser. And then I've got a website here called Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, Pixabay. And it's just pixabay.com. And you can see one of the things it says is free images and royalty free. That means you don't need to ask permission. Google Images is great, but Google doesn't own the image. The person that uploaded the image owns it and you don't always have permission. So using Pixabay means that you can get a, you can get a range of free images to use. So I'm going to type in the search term. Uh, in this case, horse racetrack. I'm not going to choose the ones at the bottom because that the, the top, sorry, they're actually paid for. But I'm just going to scroll through and you can see there are multiple types of images that you can select. Some might be appropriate, some might not. But here's this one, horse racing track. That actually looks quite suitable. So in order to save this, I'm just going to press and hold my finger on it. And I'm going to select add to photos. Now there's a reason I'm not just tapping copy and paste and I'll show you why when we get to Keynote. You remember earlier on in the video where I was showing you when you didn't have anything selected on your slide and you tapped the paintbrush, so nothing selected, none of my horses, none of my whales, whatever animal you're using, but when I go to my paintbrush, I have this option to change the background. Now when you change the background, it's very similar to how you change the color of your horse. There are various colors, various textures, um, there's the gradient, you can do them all, but sometimes they aren't always appropriate. So what is quite good is you can upload an image to your background. Okay, so I'm going to tap image, change image, choose photo. That'll open my photos app. There you can see the image that I saved from Pixabay, free to use. Um, I could even put the horses in space if I wanted to. You see that one down the bottom there. 
but I'm just going to select the racetrack. And while it might not look 100% accurate for getting started and just getting to grips with how everything looks this is a very good background to have to give you that art of the possible that view of what you think might be suitable what you can have pupils do at this stage or if you are a pupil watching this is you can position your objects to a start place somewhere that you think might be suitable don't be afraid to use that pinch and zoom that if you pinch your fingers together if you pinch your fingers together on a keynote slide it will zoom out and give you that bit of extra space. But what we're going to do is we're going to start our animation. So to do that, we tap on our slide. We use our slide picker at the side. Um, you can see it says number one there. If I tap on it and then move my finger along to where it says transition, this is an animation for a slide, which is what we're actually going to use. So if I tap transition, you can see down the bottom it has the option to add. If I tap add, the one that we are looking for is one of the best animations out there, Magic Move. So when we tap on Magic Move and then tap the X at the side to close it, it gives me the option to duplicate. That just means I will have two slides exactly the same. That's exactly what I want. One is the start of the animation, one is the end. So let's tap duplicate and you'll see I have slide one and slide two. So slide one is where the animation starts slide two is where the animation ends so what we are going to do here is we're going to move our horses to the other side of the slide slide one is where they're going to start slide two is where they're going to end so if you're doing something similar to this you could maybe decide here right there's that pinch um, you could maybe decide here what am i going to do i think i'm going to have the red horse win so i'm going to just move the red horse along and i'm going to say right he's the one that's going to get to the other side first then I'm going to pick my second place. Maybe take the blue horse. He's not going to get as far. I'm just going to put his nose to the edge. Just about, or just, to, yeah. That works quite well. Yellow horse, he's going to uh, get there. He's maybe just going to get to the, um, the tail of the red horse. And the green horse, he's got a limp. He's, he's going a bit slow, so he's going to get to the tail of the blue horse. Now, best bit of advice I can give you is test, retest and double test before you share it. Before you share it with students, before you share it with your teacher, test it to see how it looks. And in order to do that, we go to slide one, we press my blue play button up in the taskbar and we tap our slide. And here we're going to see the animation. Okay, my animation works, but if I'm being quite critical of myself, it's going too fast. Yes, they're going to slide, it would be great if I could make the legs move, but that's another style of animation that we'll look at in another video. All I want to do just now is to make this look a bit more realistic. So let's tap on my slide again, slide number one this time, as we did before, tap transition, and down the bottom, instead of add, magic moves already there. So let's tap on it, and you can see we have the choice to change it. So I'm going to change my duration, that's how long it takes. Sweet spot is round about 10 seconds, anywhere between 10 and 15. Anything over, not going to appear to be quite natural. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it start automatically after I press the play button. This means that, you know, as I press play, the animation starts. Looks a bit smoother, feels a bit better, feels a bit more natural. As with everything, press play and test it. Okay, they're moving a bit slower, but Look at the red horse. The red horse is getting faster. Why? Because it's got further to move across my slide. The green horse doesn't have as far to move, so it looks like it's going slower. So that animation feels a bit more natural. So now that I've made my animation on my slide, I can tweak it, I can change it, I can do whatever I need to with the slides as long as I have where it starts and ends. And what we're going to do next is see how we can maybe take it a bit further. If you're happy though, you can stop at this stage and be, have a great animation. If you've made it this far, you're maybe willing to go a bit further. Now that I've made my animation, I'm going to take it a bit further. I'm going to export it. So I tap my three dots in the corner, I tap export and I select movie. I leave everything as it is. 
So go to next slide, it will be at 5 seconds, go to next build after 2 seconds, leave the resolution, the frame rate, all we need to make sure is that slide range is selected to all, tap export. Now the longer the animation, the more slides, the longer this will take. My share menu comes up, I could copy it straight into iMovie, but that would only be a one use. If I save it, I can use it as many times as I have to. So now that I have my, my animation saved as a video, I can put it into iMovie and do a bit more. So let's tap on iMovie, you can see it's the uh, purple one with the white star. This is on my iPad. When I tap on iMovie, I have the option to start a project. Now, a bit confusingly, it does say magic move here. You don't need to worry about that. That's one that it makes a movie almost by magic. What we are going to select is movie. And then you can see there's my uh, animation that's been saved as a video there. So I'm going to tap on that one. Perfect. And I'm going to tap create movie. So now that my movie has, you know, it's in the edit mode, what can I do with it? So I see as I scroll my finger along, my animation is playing. But if I wanted to, I could add in some more. There's some, there's a multitude of sound effects that are there. There's applause, there's things that, that, that can give a little bit more depth to your video. The video that, that you're watching just now, I've edited and created using iMovie. It's a great tool for taking videos that little bit further, not just videos that you've recorded with the camera, but videos that you've created using Keynote or using the screen record function, whatever you're using on your iPad. You can see there's a few there. If I tap on one... Okay, that one might be quite good. Um, there's, but there's various ones. You can pick and choose. Just be aware if you're doing this in a class and there's 30 iPads, it might be a bit noisy. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. So, yeah, I'm going to choose applause because I think applause works quite nicely. So I could have applause happening there. Maybe I'll move it to the end. We'll show you that in a second. My other favourite feature is soundtracks. Now, if you've used Clips before, Clips has the exact same... Uh, list of soundtracks that are available. The great thing about these soundtracks is again they trim themselves automatically to match the length of your video. You don't need to worry about putting it in and having it just kind of cut off at the end. It will automatically do that. So it means again that editing of your video can be that bit smoother. You don't have to worry about it. You can just tap and use it. Gets back to that creativity, sharing, learning, bringing all of those great things that we know happens in class. So you can preview, sounds quite good. Oh, I like that one. That one works quite nicely. Let's tap the plus button and see it goes right down to the end. Now if I press play right at the start, it's going to have the applause. Where should the applause be? It should be at the end. So let's press and hold on applause and I'm going to take it just so it goes to the end. But I don't want it to start there. That's a bit too, bit too, so I'm going to trim it. I'm just going to put my finger on it and then put my finger on the white line. And I want the applause to start just as that red horse gets to the end. Yeehaw, my horse is going, here it goes, red horse is going fast, it's getting to the end, the blue horse is bringing up the rear, green horse is going slow, it's a red horse by the nose. So that creativity that pupils are able to do, that teachers are able to um, harness, that teachers are able to use themselves, is all done on out-of-the-box apps on your iPad, whether it's creating an iMovie, a Keynote, bringing those two things together, tapping edit, tapping share, saving that video, using it in Book Creator, sharing it via OneDrive or via AirDrop means that the showcase of knowledge, people sharing their knowledge in a way that is fun, engaging and makes sense to them can easily be harnessed using animation to develop literacy, numeracy, health and well-being, social studies. Whatever the subject area, the limits are the depth of a child's imagination. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video on creating animation using Keynote on iPad. We'll see you next time.